Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in cryptocurrencies digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. So today I want to do a follow-up of a couple of videos I did in the past where it was my price predictions, the exit strategy, and then of course what I'm going to do with uh, those cash outs as I take chips off the table. Am I going to just put everything into cash and let it sit there and become on fire? No. Am I going to put it all into stable coins? No. Am I going to put it all into different investment properties? No, no, no. So. Uh, I need to clarify just to make sure everybody knows uh, exactly what I'm doing. This is not uh, financial advice, uh, but these are just the things that I would do. And um, I, I think they're pretty solid. So there's different, there's seven different criteria I'm going to go into. Uh, but first, I need to just take a step back and uh, let you know what I'm talking about. So this was actually a video that I did uh, a couple of weeks ago. Actually, this was on uh, June, no, sorry, January, <laughs> June, January 7, 2021. And it was my price prediction video where I just gave all the different price predictions that I had for everything that, that's in my portfolio. I don't like to give outrageous price predictions. I think they're pretty reserved. And some people have said that they are actually quite low. And I'm okay with that because if they go higher, then I don't think anybody will begrudge me and say, ah, you know what? You told me that Bitcoin was only going to 150,000 and it went to 400,000, you jerk. No one's gonna care. So if I just say reserve, and these are the ones, remember, that I feel they're gonna to go to, I don't think that I should have a problem here. And I hope, I hope that I am wrong. So that was the first part. When we talk about probabilities and gains, you can watch that video, I'll link at the very end. So then the next video that we did is we talked about the exit strategies and I talk about having an actual plan of what to do. And this just came down to this uh, spreadsheet, which you can find the link of, uh, or in the description of every one of my videos, there's a link and it'll take you to this uh, exit strategy and it's all the different exit strategies that I have and the cash out price points. And I made it very simple. My first exit strategy is a little bit more cumbersome and difficult. This one's very simple. I just say, here's an 80-20 rule and you're gonna, I'm going to sell 80%. I'm gonna uh, hodl or keep on with 20% uh, of my cryptocurrency holdings because you never know. You never know, like I say, Bitcoin can go up to a million. I have no idea. But uh, I think that, and I base all these on um, the different uh, four year cycles that we have, which is having all time high dips reset, having all time high dips reset. So in January 12th, or January 12th, January 2012, we had a halving. 2013, we had an all time high. 2014, we had a dip. 2015, we had a reset. Then 2016, same thing happened. Having all time high in 2017, big dip where everything just dropped down to the floor in 2018 and then reset in 2019. Now we just had a halving in 2020. 2021, I believe, is going to be a huge, massive bull run. And that's what uh, I kind of see what is going. So this actually leads me to my next point. If we have this massive bull run, which hopefully it all works out, I mean, it has only been eight or other years before, and not that anything's guaranteed, but if history repeats itself, I think we should be okay. Um, the thing is, people always ask me is like, well, if instead of cashing out, which is a taxable event, and we'll get in that second, why don't you just take loans? I talked about this before. So you can take a loan with some place like Celsius. And I'll link this in the description below as well. If you want to take a loan in anything, you have to collateralize that loan. So if you want to take out, let's say this is an Ethereum and you want to take out just a thousand bucks. I don't care if you want to take out a hundred thousand, a hundred million. Well, you can't take a hundred million. I'd be pretty crazy a million dollars, you have to collateralize it. And even if you wanted to just take out a thousand dollars, because right now Ethereum is about 1200 bucks today. It is, uh, what is it? It's January 29th. So maybe about 1200 bucks. So if you want to take out a thousand, you need to, at the very minimum, give them one and a half. You have to 50% collateralize that. So that means to get a thousand bucks, you need 1.5. What is the interest rate on that? Uh, it's 9%. So 9% and that's what it is. If you want to get a really great rate, you'd have to give four times what you need, uh, which would be three Ethereum or quarter, I guess. So you're looking at uh, an APR of only 1% at $1,000. So you can do that and let's just say you want $10,000. Let's say you want $100,000, okay? What do you need? Well, just to do one and a half, you need 152 ETH. If you want to get, and that's at 9%, mind you. At 25%, you're looking at 1%. So here's the thing. If you get that loan and you take that money out and you're in, we're in this massive bull run, you're like, it'll never go down because all the institutions are here, which I, I heard the same thing song and dance before. And I think Bitcoin could be a pretty good play, but the altcoins, eh, who knows? So what will happen is if the price of your collateralized asset goes down and it doesn't meet this 100,000, or actually in this case, 150, yeah, 100, actually 150,000 on, on, on this side, 
they're going to say, hey, you owe us either the collateral, which is we're going to take your ETH and we're going to liquidate it, or you're going to pay us the money. I can't pay the money because I put it on a house or I bought a new Lambo or whatever else it is. So you have to be careful with these loans. These loans really are short-term loans. If you can do something with this to make the money work for you in three months to six months, go right ahead. But if you're taking like, I'm just going to take this loan and move to Bermuda and I'll be fine, I don't think that's uh, that's a great play. I wouldn't do it, and that's all I'm saying, unless you have another uh, type of reasoning for, for a loan, for like, hey, I'm going to take it out for 30 years. Just don't think it's going to work. So what does that mean? So here is my cash out plan originally. Cash. Let's just take, I'm going to take all my Bitcoin, all my Ethereum. I'm out of this market. Who cares, right? You can do 100%, but just know that you're going to pay some serious capital gains taxes. And we talk about that in certain videos. I'll also link those. And those could be, if you're in the United States, it could be between 20% and 48%. Just depends. So that is up to you. But if you want to do a smarter approach, uh, again, not financial advice. This is what I'm going to do. I don't think just having cash uh, in your bank is a great option. I think Michael Saylor showed us that's not a great option because if you have a bunch of cash with the quantitative ease and everybody printing, it could be very cumbersome and you could start to lose the value of the dollar. As they start to print trillions and trillions of dollars, what does that do for you? Not too much. Your dollar does not go as far. I think cryptocurrency is probably the way to go. So here's the thing. Here is my um, cash out strategy as, as it was because it's not really cash out. It's really, I guess, in learning to figure out which assets you want. I like to collect things. I like to have assets because those are a little bit more safer than just, just having cash. So what I'm going to do, uh, again, using the uh, exit strategy that we just talked about, the 80-20 rule, I'm going to cash out. I'm going to keep 10% uh, in a bank. Yeah, I got to use banks still. I know it sucks, but whatever. And let, let's crack and start to get that banking license. I'll definitely use you guys. But this is what we got. 10% just to have, you know, dry powder. Yeah. In, in, in the side. It's always good to have cash because you never know when you're going to need it and an opportunity comes up. I have cash. The next one, I'm going to take about 25%. And this is the lion's share. I'm going to put it into stable coins. And people will say, well, why just, why put it in stable coins? Because it's just one to one. You know, it's supposed to be pegged to the dollar. So uh, what is the point of that? Well, here's the thing. If I can put this into stable coins, and I'm talking about USDC, I'm not talking about Tether. I don't know what is going on with Tether. We'll see after the audit. I just do not trust that right now, and I don't see why people use Tether. Uh, why don't you just use USDC? It's, uh, it's, a, it's an ERC-20 token. It's uh, on, on the Ethereum network. It's uh, backed by some pretty good companies. I don't understand why people are like, I got to use Tether. Just use USDC. Here's another thing about that. Um, first of all, you have to understand, if I need to cash out and get sta and into stable coins or just cash out in general, how do I figure out where I'm going to cash out? Because someone asked me a question about, like, well, I just bought Theta, or I just bought... Uh, Celsius, or I just bought some wacky coin uh, from a Uniswap or a simple swap. How do I cash out? So just real quick, just so you know, if you go to, let me back up here. If you go to CoinGecko or a coin market, it doesn't really matter, uh, any of those, and you look for, let's find uh, Theta again right here. And you're like, where do I, first of all, where do I buy it? Where, where can I sell it? Mostly where, where can you sell it? I get everything on simple swap these days or Uniswap. As you scroll down and you look for things, see this uh, part right here where it says exchanges, see all trading pairs. If you open that up, you can find every single exchange that you want and all the different trading pairs. So you're like, well, how do I, if, if I bought Theta on SimpleSwap and I have my wallet, how do I sell this thing? Well, you can just do this. Just go to Binance. Just go to Hotbit, BKX, uh, hit BTC. Uh, I don't know where these are. Also look over here on the trust score where if they're green, eh, pretty good. Yellow, no. Red, no. So just take a look at that. That's where you can find to sell those things. Also, um, real quick, why I'm recommending USDC or why I use USDC, not recommending. I can't give you a recommendation. Um, just like this, Visa partners with Ethereum Digital Dollar Startup that raised 271 million. This is um, Visa announced it is connecting its global payment network of 60 million merchants to the USDC developed by Circle. Uh, USDC software and their platforms and send and receive USDC payments. So again, Tether's got an issue right now. They're going to go through uh, an audit. Uh, there is uh, different lawsuits pending, and they're going back and forth with the New York Attorney General. I don't know why people use uh, Tether. Just don't get it. But then the question becomes, okay, Rob, so you have it in stable coins just for there for maybe you want to buy things later on. Why don't you just put in dollars? Just have it there because you can do the same thing. Here's the reason why. If you look over on my exchange and wallet fees, there is, again, a link in the description. <laughs> 
there's a description uh, or just look below in the description there's a link she's and when you, when you click on that you can get to my exchange and wallet fees these are all the different exchanges and wallets that i recommend and right up here everything is an affiliate link just so you know so you don't have to use these links but if you do use them you get between 10 and 25 dollars these are the ones that i recommend and things i just do not recommend all the things that i've used and personally still use right now so if you look at voyager <laughs> brocker gotta change that uh, if you scroll down what's great about these two platforms is that first of all usdt is offered over on celsius sure again if you want to do it use it you can earn apy just for holding your crypto your stable coin so right over here it's almost 14 percent you get paid in celsius or if you're like me an american because you can't get paid in celsius it'll just be uh 11 in tether same thing right with matic uh, with dot uh, whatever you want to do uh, chain link you either get paid in celsius on celsius or link or uh, on like kind on voyager you only get paid in whatever your your not staking, but whatever you have on the, uh, the platform. So Bitcoin to Bitcoin, Ethereum to Ethereum, and so on and so forth. But I want you to notice on USDC, you can get paid 8% just for holding USDC on Voyager. You can get paid almost 14% in Celsius and almost 11% in USDC on Celsius. So why wouldn't I, why would I keep it in the cash when I can just sit back and do absolutely nothing and just leave it on there for uh, these guys to use and loan out? So. Uh, that is what I feel is the best option for me. So just so you know, right now, uh, Celsius will always have the better uh, APY. Just Voyager and Celsius, they are partners in this, in this whole game. That's how they, how they gain yield. But uh, what I usually do is I buy everything on Voyager, almost everything. And uh, I will, when I'm not so lazy, transfer it over to Celsius. I'm not that lazy. I got a lot of things going on. So like I'll, every day I dollar cost average in, I buy things and it just sits on Voyager. So until I actually get up and go, okay, hit the button and transfer over Celsius, I still get 8% of USDC. When I transfer it over, I get 10%, and stuff, whatever. So that is uh, the one option there. And then let me go back. So that is essentially 35% or a third of what I'm going to do when I cash out. Uh, this one here, 15% is land. I like to invest into land and properties. I have investment properties, I have land, um, and they're great. Honestly, if you're looking for a store of value, it's pretty good. The problem with land is it's not very liquid. So if you want to move land tomorrow, you got to go through a process, but it's a pretty good place to park your money. And there's different tax benefits for that if you're doing it through a business, and I'm not going to get into that here, but I will take 15% chunk of that and I will put it into an investment uh, land uh, option. Uh, that's what I will do. 20% is I will take also that money and I will put it into investment properties. Uh, we did a video, so I was trying to, to figure out here. We did a video called Cash Out Alternatives and I talked about um, exiting and then putting that money into an investment property and then putting that investment property. You can rent it long term or you can do what we do, me and my wife, which is short term rentals on Airbnb. I think right now, we're still in, we just got into 2021. So whenever you're watching this, remember that thing called COVID? Yeah, it sucked. It was just awful. Uh, but right now, not too many people are traveling a ton. But once everybody gets, a lot of people get vaccine, around everybody, they're going to want to travel. And when they want to travel, what do they want to do? Well, they can go to hotels and do all those things. Or they can just do what, what I do, and what a lot of people are starting to do, is just use Airbnb. And they can stay in one of my houses. So I believe that as time goes on, people are going to want to travel, and they're going to want to use Airbnb. Even right now with the, with the coronavirus and what's going on, uh, we still have our properties booked. So uh, I don't know. I, that's just what uh, the strategy that we're looking forward to doing. So we have that. And then also, as far as businesses, I have a couple. One is Amazon FBA. So it's very simple. Um, Amazon FBA is you go to manufacturers or producers and say, or suppliers and go, look, how much of these units do you have? Okay, I have... Um, uh, let's say I have 10,000 uh, gas caps, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Okay, I'm gonna buy those 10,000 gas caps. How much are you selling for at uh, the stores? Or 20 bucks. Okay, I'll pay you nine. I'll pay you nine, you give them to me, and then I'm gonna sell them on Amazon. Sure, we can make a quick profit, everybody's happy. That's pretty much how Amazon works if you're doing Amazon FBA fulfillment by Amazon. And that's what I'm gonna put uh, more into for so I can buy more units or more products. I can sell them on Amazon. And usually the industry average, you're looking at between 60 and 90 days and you can sell those things. Um, I do not do uh, Amazon training. I just know how to do it. Maybe at some point I will, but right now I'm just too busy, but that is what uh, an option I will definitely do. I will say this though, if you're looking at different options as far as loans, 
I think this is a fantastic uh, route, and I will probably do this, to collateralize my cryptocurrency and uh, so I can get money out and pay for more units for Amazon, turn around and sell those in 60 days, pay the loan back, and have a profit. And that's just how I see it. And one more thing if you want, I want to make mention is that the reason why I do all these things, it's not because I like difficulty. It's just because I like to be safe. I don't know what's going to happen. And I think I feel when I hedge my bets and I don't go all in on one thing, that uh, it's, uh, there's a little bit more safety in those numbers. And that's just how I see it. Okay, so the next two are the most exciting. And they're not a huge part I mean, they're 20%, so I, you know, it's like one-fifth, but I think they're going to be massive moving down the line. And I'll explain in a second. So 15% is for staking. And staking is going to be huge. I just see it as uh, just a huge tidal wave of opportunity that could come down. What am I talking about here? So um, there's a lot of different cryptocurrency projects that you can, you can stake, but one of the ones that I definitely like is Polkadot. Polkadot you can get 12%. And depending, and this is on Kraken. Now, depending on where you go, you can go different places. Some places it's like 16%, 18%. I, you, you have to look for all those. Uh, I'm not here to tell you exactly where to put it, but I'm just telling you that for Polkadot, it's a pretty good uh, opportunity for you. And it's like in the top five. So it's roughly about, I want to say 17 bucks a day. So let's just say what you think it could be like in a year, three years, five years, 10 years. And imagine getting 18% uh, yield 12, 12% yield on that every single year. That's a lot of money. So Polkadot, I think, is a pretty good one for just for staking. And you don't do anything. I mean, it's pretty great. So there's that. You can stake Theta. That's why I'm a big believer in the Theta on top of the fact that I think as everybody starts to work from home and more things are being done uh, in your house and you want to stream, you're going to need Theta. And they're the ones that are actually working with Google and with YouTube instead of against them. That's why it's one of my top picks. And on top of that, Cardano. Now, we here at Digital Asset News, we have our own stake pool. It's called DNews. <laughs> and if you want to check it out, again, link in the description. So when you go there, it's going to go to this, this web page. You click on wallets. You're going to scroll down. And it's going to give you a 13-minute overview of what staking is as far, as far as Cardano, how it's superior to Ethereum, and how you can stake to the DNews pool and how we compare to everybody else. So just so you knew, if you take a look at pooltool.io, Right now, there's almost 70% total staked of Cardano. All the max supply or circulating supply right now, 70% of that is staked. Pretty good, right? This is, this is Digital Asset News or DNews. This is how, how the pool plays out. Usually, the industry average for Cardano is between 4 and 6%. Our last epoch or epoch, however you want to say it, is around 4.41%, but uh, which was okay, I suppose. But lately, the lifetime return is 5.67. And the reason for that is we go through the Microsoft uh, Azure network and it's uh, very safe, very stable, and it's uh, not cheap, but it uh, assures consistency and that's all we're looking for and we're up all the time. So uh, DNews, uh, this is what we have right now. We have almost a thousand delegations. We don't have a bunch of whales, so that's pretty good. Uh, the saturation point, uh, you can only have 63 million we're at almost 40%. We've only, been, we, we've only started this uh, two months ago, so we're doing great. Really happy with that. But just so you know, what happens if you delegate to a stake pool that has too much? When you do that, it's called oversaturation or it's saturated, and you start to lose rewards. So if you are staking right now in any other staking pool, just make sure you take a look and it's not oversaturated uh, like whatever this one is. Okay, so that is that part. Also, for staking, if you want to take a look at uh, all the different projects. There's a great website called stakingrewards.com, like in the description, and you can just take a look. And what's great about this, it, it has everything here. It gives you the uh, rewards, stake value, price right now. It's awesome. And it's pretty good for everything that you want to know. But what I want to show you is Ethereum 2.0. <sighs> I don't stake it because there's a little, little bit of issues. Slashing, you have to stake it for so long. But in reality, it's a pretty great play. I'm gonna show you something real quick. So you're looking at nine, almost 10% rewards. So let's say you had 10 ETH, right? At uh, almost 10%, you're looking at $1,300 right now at the current price. 1,300 bucks just for 10 uh, Ethereum. That's pretty great. And it's only right, right around 1,000. I personally think at the end of this year, it'll be up to 10,000. So 10,000, 1,000 times 10, you're looking at $10,000 per year extra just for staking 10 Ethereum. But, 
But remember, uh, like we talked about with those, with those cycles, the four-year cycles, if 2021 we hit 10,000, it is cryptocurrency, so the value will probably go down after that. Not probably, not it definitely will. No one has a crystal ball. So if it does go down, let's say it goes from like 10,000 down to 6,000, you still got 6X from this, you're making 6,000 bucks a year for doing absolutely nothing. Again, this is why I think staking is awesome, which leads me to my last points. I trust capital IRA, and that is what I'm talking about, oops, right here in this piece. It's only 5%. Why do I only have 5% if I think it's one of like the best things ever? It's because for an IRA, and this is only for America, in Europe, it's called something different, so check that out. I can't remember what the heck it is. But for iTrust, that's what I use here because I'm an American, and I use a Roth IRA. What's great about this is that, well, what's bad about this is I can only put $7,000 per year into my IRA. If it was up to me, I'd put everything in there. And the reason is, is because everything that I put into this IRA, they can't tax me on it. Because whatever I get paid from my, my businesses, let's say I get, let's say I get seven, no, let's say I get 10,000 a year, okay? Then the government says, you owe us, you know, 30%, sure. There's 30%, I have $7,000 that I can spend after tax. I will put that entire 7,000 right into iTrust. It's just an example. And if that 7,000 that I put into Ethereum goes to, I, I buy seven Ethereum and I go to 10,000, the 7,000 to $70,000 that that is in my IRA, they cannot tax me on that at all. They can't touch me. I can take that out at a certain age, that I, I fit nine and a half. I can take that out and guess what happens? They can't touch me. They can't tax. They, they, they can't tax it at all. That is the biggest thing, which leads me to uh, one of my last points. <laughs> so this was a great article uh, by Anthony. Uh, he's the uh, marketing manager, talks about cold hard facts. But the big thing is in total value locked, stable coins built on Ethereum, sure. I mean, everything's built on Ethereum. If you don't know about DeFi, it doesn't matter. If you don't know what project to, to invest into, it doesn't matter. Just invest into, just invest into Ethereum because everything's built on Ethereum right now. Or Cardano, one of those is going to make be big. So Ethereum 2.0 is out, and it's all about proof of stake. We can stake it, right? And, it's, and what Anthony was talking about here is when you look at the above information, Ethereum is the ultimate IRA asset. And the reason he said that is because I trust, not right now, but I believe in quarter, the end of quarter one or quarter two, they're going to offer Ethereum staking. What does that mean? So if you have, if you bought Ethereum and you put $7,000 of Ethereum, like I just talked about uh, in my example, and I put $7,000 of Ethereum and I, then they, they stake it for me at 10%, not only am I appreciating on the value of the Ethereum, I am also appreciating on the value of the staking. So I get $70,000 plus the 10% on the original Ethereum, and it's just a flywheel. So I'm getting, I'm double dipping. So right now, this is why it's a super important. It is important right now that everybody knows, because we are in January 2021, you have until April 2021 to contribute up to $7,000 into this Roth IRA and put it all there before it gets closed out. You can contribute to $7,000 and retro it, and then you can put another $7,000 for 2021. So right now, I have already maxed out on 20, uh, in 2020. I actually put it in my, my last $1,000 just a week ago um, because I can retro it. Now I'm starting on 2021, I'm putting another $7,000 in, and guess where most of it's going? Ethereum. Actually, it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, gold, and silver, and that's uh, what, I, what I feel is best. So, real quick, <clears throat> if, let me blow this up so everybody can see it. Not me, all right. So, if you have a traditional IRA somewhere else, or an old employer plan like a 401k, 403b, military TSP, or 457, then you can move them tax and penalty free to a crypto IRA. Uh, at iTrust. And, I, and there's a little snippet here, ETH staking, but the last one is what I didn't talk about, which is passing it down to a beneficiary. I get this question a lot. Rob, how do I make a trust? Which is, you know, legal document that transfers over everything to your kids, your grandkids, or whoever you want to, right? I'm like, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a CPA, so I have no idea. But there's a great thing. There is a law, there is a rule, there is regulation that you can pass down your IRA 
when if you pass away, it's like an, it's, it's almost like like a, like a policy to whoever you want to, your wife, your husband, your kids, your grandkids, your whoever else, as long as it's, it's in some document, which you have to get to with, with a lawyer, but you can pass it all the way down to them. And here's the great thing. They don't have to wait to a certain age to cash out. Actually, I think it's the law is, and don't quote me this, you have, they have 10 years to pretty much drain it uh, to, you know, to take the profits. So if you're looking for a way to pass on your cryptocurrency tax-free, that will be the, one of the ways to do it. So it is just uh, a great option. I think uh, that's just something you should look into. Again, take a look in the description. There is a link. Also, viewers of Dan, uh, they get the first month free for the iTrust IRA. I, what I did is I didn't, I didn't understand an IRA, how it all worked. So what I did was I just scheduled a call with them, totally free, and I, and I did it virtually. It was uh, me, Anthony, and Blake, and they just explained it all to me. This is how it all works. This is how it goes. It was like a 30-minute session, and I had all my questions answered. And then if you have more questions, they'll set another, another thing. So just if you got time, I would definitely take a look at that. So there is that piece. And the last, <laughs> I keep saying the last thing, this really is it. At some point, we're going to have to pay taxes, right? So when I, ugh, wrong one, when I cash out, when I put in stable coins, I buy land, whatever else, they're all taxable events, just so you know. Loans aren't a taxable event. But at some point, I'm going to have to pay taxes, which sucks, but that's just how it is. So if you're going to pay taxes, uh, go to friends of the show, CryptoTrader.tax. This is who I used last year, and it's who I'm using this year. And what's great about them is they have a direct integration to all the major exchanges and even some of the crappy ones. And when I used it last year, from the time that I got into the member section to put all my information in to actually sending it over my CPA, it was 30 minutes. It was a direct uh, API into uh, Coinbase, into Kraken, into, well, Binance, when I, actually had, when I actually could use Binance, and everything else. It downloaded everything. It showed me my realized gains, my unrealized gains, my losses, and everything else. Right over to my lawyer, sent me $16,000 in a boatload of time. So if you're looking for that option, um, again, there's, well, there's two options, actually. Right now, they're running a promo uh, until the end of, uh, of April. You can put your first name in, your first name and email, and you can enter to win an unlimited tax report, $300 value. Great. Also, if you're like, you know what? I don't want to deal with it. I need this now. So just go to the link down below and you get 20% off viewers of Dan and uh, set, set you up and they're pretty great. So that's it. And that's the, the big stuff. And lastly, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. Just so you know, to clear all this up, this is where I put all of my crypto. Um, I don't believe it's a great idea to put it all in one place. Uh, people will say, well, let's put everything on a ledger. Well, I've had different reports of people who like lose their seed phrases. I don't lose my seed phrase because I have the stone book and uh, like in the description, sorry. And uh, that's what I use because I have two of them. One is at my house and one is at my safety deposit box. Because if I don't, if I can make sure that I don't lose the seed phrase, I will never lose all my crypto. And I've already had enough horror stories from subscribers or I will never let that happen. So I got my ledger. That's half. 15% is on Celsius because of what we talked about, the yield. 20% is on Voyager. 1% is in my Brave, my Ether wallet. And the 14% somewhere around there is, is in on my uh, on exchanges so I can start my exit strategy and start to sell out. Or because I'm just too lazy to, to, to put them over because I'm buying things. And that's it. So look, I know it was a little bit long. I apologize, but I think this is pretty good information to, for everybody to know right now. So if you watch this all the way to the end, hey, Thanks for watching all the way in. If you liked it, why don't you just hit a thumbs up? Why don't you subscribe? I got all, I got more stuff like this coming at you every single day. And that is it. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, if you like these types of videos, let me two more. It's going to pop up on your left and right. Let YouTube do its magic. And that is all. So thanks for watching. See you on the next one.